Ace Jubilee Courier. This is going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. In front of the van, you've got your hitch, jockey wheel, and handbrake. We'll demonstrate this in person. So, front locker, you've got your gas regulator up on the bulkhead itself, with yellow gas shut off valve on the side. You've got your gas uh, valve for turning the gas flow on and off. And then you've got your reverse thread fitment that goes into the top of the bottle itself. But like I said, it is a reverse, thre uh, th reverse thread fitment. So you need to turn it the opposite way to what you normally would to be able to turn the gas, uh, to release the gas pipe or to fit the gas pipe. Come down the off side of the van, you've got your water pump connection. Very simple to use, blue trigger at the bottom that you'll pull back to release the pump and pull back the blue trigger and push in to uh, put the pump into the side of the van. You've then got your pipe work that drops down inside the act roll um, and that will need to be fully submerged for the water system to work properly. You've then got your wind down leg on either side of the caravan at the front to stabilise the caravan. They aren't there for lifting the van, they are just there for stabilising. Trimmer heating flue, you need to remove this cover any time you're using the caravan on gas um, or any time you're using the heating hot water systems. So you just simply remove the cover by popping it off, as you can see, um, and that will allow the gas system to breathe on board the van. Then got your mains power lead coming into the side of the van and your bat uh, battery for the van. Quick release terminals on top. Uh, do advise during winter you remove one of these connections uh, just so it doesn't drain the battery down completely. Then we've got your two fridge vents. The two fridge vents there to essentially allow the hot air out the side of the fridge unit and take in some cool air. And there's also a gas flue behind one of these as well. Wheel nuts and motor mover. We'll demonstrate the motor mover to you while you're here on site. And we'll also talk wheel nuts the correct setting. Grey waste pipes so the fresh water that goes in the front of the van has to come out somewhere and the two large circles that you see here will allow the pipe work, uh, will allow you to connect the pipe work up so, the, so it uh, essentially allows the water out the side of the van and down into the waste master for the caravan itself. Then got your toilet flush tank, or toilet tank sorry. Release it by pulling up the handle at the bottom and pulling the cassette towards you. The neck here turns out 90 degrees and the green cap is a measure for the fluid, which I'll come to in a moment. On the back of the cassette you have a green pressure relief button so when you're tipping the waste away it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. This cassette will need one litre of water and a cap full of blue fluid prior to use. The turnout neck here is for the flush system. You need to take this cap off and in this tank you need to put three and a half litres of water and a cap full of the pink fluid prior to use. As you can see, it's already been filled up, ready to be used. Um, got a door at the back here to access the rear of the van, where the bunks are, should you need to. And then you've got your wind down legs again on either side of the caravan at the rear, and again, they are just there for stabilizing rather than lifting. Down the door side, at the front of the van, you have just got your wind down leg again on this side at the front. Going inside the van now, first thing you need to do is, is turn the power on. So if you're on a mains power site, you're going to press the button here that's got the battery option for the caravan. And it'll allow the control panel to kick in, so we'll turn that on. As you can see, it's indicating to me we've got mains power coming in and the battery is charging. If you're connected to the car and you're towing down the road, you'll need to press the car battery here. Um, so you select, it won't allow me to do it at the moment, but when you connect to the car, you come inside, press the button, and it'll allow you to swap over to the car 12 volt system, so you can use the fridge um, as a cool box, and it'll also charge the battery on board the caravan as you're going down the road. you also notice on here you've got a water pump switch, which I'll come back to in a moment. So as you can see, we've got the water connected on the outside of the caravan. I'm just going to demonstrate how to fill the water system first. One of the first things you're going to need to do is open all the taps up on the hot side. Now you'll notice I've already actually bled the water system. However, normally when you come to the van, there'd be no water in here because um, you'd have drained it down on the prior use. So you need to open all the taps up onto the hot side. I'm just going to shut it off, but you'd leave that open normally through this process. You'd then come underneath the seat on the front right hand side of the caravan. And you would need to make sure the yellow drain down valve that you can just about see in the video there in the center of screen is parallel with the floor. If that valve is parallel with the floor, you'll be able to fill the water system up on board the caravan. If that valve is upright and pointing towards the bottom of the seat, then it'll actually drain the complete water system down. 
Um, and if you turn the pump on, essentially the water would come straight back out the bottom of the van. So before you fill the system, yellow valve parallel with the floor. Upright is the drain position. So once you've got that valve parallel and you've got the taps open, you'll come back over to the control panel by the door. Hit the water pump button and the water pump will start running. At that point then, you'll start hearing spitting and splattering sounds from the taps because the taps are already open. And then when that water system is full, you'll have water running continuously out of every tap. Once it is running continuously out of every tap, you can shut all of the taps back off. So to warm the water on electric underneath the seat on the right hand side front of the van, you'll see you've got a control panel with trip switches above it. Let me just get a little bit closer to that so you can see what I'm talking about. The top control, the top fuses, as you can see here, your household style trip switches, but then below you've got your main power V space heater, you've got your battery charger, which you always leave on, and you can also, also always leave the space heater on. However, the water heater switch only turn on when you've got water completely in the system. That will allow the water system to warm up on electric. If you haven't got any water in the system and it and it is turned on, it could potentially burn out the element inside of the tank. So please do make sure you turn that off before you drain the water system down and make sure it is always turned off before you turn the caravan back on. Turn that off for now, even though the water system's full. Um, we don't need to be warming up the system just yet. So the water system is full and I've shown you where the electric water heating switch is. The next switch we're going to come to is the gas water heating switch. So the gas option on the van would also be used for boot boosting the gas system on board the caravan. Great on the outside here, you'll spin it round to the gas symbol on the side here, or the flame symbol. Then you get a green light up here behind here, which you can just see just here. You would need to make sure at this point that cover on the outside, the white trimmer cover that I showed you, is removed. Now if this system stays ignited, you'll get a green light stay on this side. However, if it fails to ignite like it will do in a moment, there we go, right on cue, the red light will appear in here. That means it has essentially failed to ignite on gas. The reason it's failed at the moment is because the gas bottle's turned off and also we have that flue cover on on the outside. To control the water heating on gas, you've got the, um, or the water temperature on gas, you've got a dial here between 30 and 70 degrees, as you can see. Whatever number is above the green light, when it has ignited, is the temperature the water heater will warm up to. You will need to use the gas as a boost for the water system if you are showering on board the van, even if you're on mains. The electric water heating won't warm up the water quick enough for showering on board, so that's why you use the gas for as a boost, essentially, for getting that system nice and hot. So that's your water heating. Next up, we're going to go to the switch to the right-hand side. This is the ultra heat, which is basically the control for the heater, which is just over there. Now, this is the electric control. So down the side here, you've got 500, 1000 and 2000. What this essentially relates to is the amount of power that is coming into the caravan from the caravan site you're on. So for instance, here on site, we can run a maximum of 500 watts into the caravan. You'll notice now the green light has appeared and I can control the temperature of the heater on the dial in the center. The green light essentially indicates that the heating system is working. If you have that switch that I just showed you uh, underneath the trip switch is turned off, the one that says space heater, then that green light will not appear because that is essentially the main power switch for the heating system itself underneath, uh, underneath the trip switch is in the uh, underneath bunk on the right hand side. Now, I, I did say briefly about the 500, 1000, 2000 down here. You will need to ask the site office when you go away uh, go away on each of your holidays just to see what you can run your heating and hot water on. If you have this set to the wrong amount of power, it will actually trip the trip switches on the site you are on. To turn the heating off, you'll put it back to the off position here in the centre. You can also run the heating system on gas, which again is very simple. Make sure the gas is turned on. Down the front you've got your pilot light window. You turn the gas control switch round to between 10 and 9. Hold down the gas valve and continue to hold it down. The igniter will kick in on its own. And when it has ignited, you'll get a pilot light in this window down the front. Once the pilot light has appeared, you'll continue to hold down the gas valve for a further 5 to 10 seconds. Then slowly release the gas valve. You can then control the temperature of the heater on gas on the dial on top, as you can see here. 
Now with the heating systems on board a caravan, you can actually, or on this particular system, you can run them as a blown air system. So on the dial on the right hand side here, you have your fan speed on top, between one and five. The wave symbol here indicates continuous blown air heating. So essentially the vents that you see around the caravan, down the front, just down the left hand side there, a bit like the vents you have on your car. The dot in the center indicates the heat is gonna come out the front of the heater. And on the right hand side here, you have the A. The A is automatic blown air that essentially cuts in and out with the thermostat on board the caravan. Fridge system, again, very simple to use. You have your power switch on the right hand side here. I'm just going to turn it off first. Turn the fridge on with the power button. The control panel will come on and you'll notice you have three symbols here that will disappear in a moment. So the centre symbol here is indicating that we're going to run the fridge on mains power. On mains we can control the temperature of the fridge on the button on the right hand side and that is also relevant for the gas operation. However it is not relevant for the 12 volt mode which is the call box mode. Cool box mode, so once you connect to your car, as I discussed on the control panel by the door, you can run the fridge as a cool box. Once you connect to the car and the car's running, you'll come inside the caravan, hit the car button above, uh, on the control panel by the door, and essentially you'll have a blue solid light here that will start chilling the fridge and making it work as a cool box. As I said, the temperature control at that point is completely irrelevant as it will not work as a fridge, it just keeps the beers and wine nice and cold as you're traveling to site. Gray button on the right hand side again, and we'll go to the gas mode. As long as the gas is turned on and you've bled the gas system through the hob first, so essentially you'd always ignite the hob first before trying to ignite the fridge. We'll self-ignite on gas, and the blue light here at the bottom is your pilot light when you're on the gas mode. If that flashes and a nine symbol and a spanner, uh, nine and a spanner symbol appears here on the right hand side, it will actually mean that the fridge has failed to ignite on gas. As I said on gas as well, you can control the temperature of the fridge on the button on the right hand side and right on cue it's failed to ignite so you can see how that would look. So turn the fridge off, press and hold the power button and it will iso iso isolate the power to the fridge. Cooker, hob, grill and oven all work very much like your household appliances. Please do remember though the microwave and the 240 uh, the electric ring will only work when you've got a 240 mains power source coming into the caravan. It will not work off 12 volt. Toilet system in this caravan, very simple to use. Toilet flush handle to open up the toilet flap in the center of the toilet. And then you have your electric flush for the toilet system just below. The line that you see going up here, when it illuminates red in this dot at the end, will essentially mean the toilet waste cassette needs to be emptied as the toilet cassette is full. So that's the Ace Jubilee Courier. If you have any further questions on the caravan, please don't hesitate to call us here at the caravan company and we'd be more than happy to help. We appreciate the business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon when you collect your caravan. Thank you for now. Bye-bye.